the NASA's space shuttles. His firm gained a reputation in and outside Japan for its high-grade precision technology. However, there was another company, one step ahead of Nakamura's. This large optics maker based in Germany supplied the world's observatories with telescopes. This top manufacturer began applying its advanced lens-making techniques to the medical field. It soon had a massive share of the worldwide market for neurosurgical microscopes. Nakamura thought to himself, we've polished our technical skills working on outer space equipment. If we applied those skills to neurosurgery, we could help a great number of people who are suffering. My biggest motivation was helping people who had suffered strokes. Both telescopes and surgical microscopes use lenses. They both employ optical tools. There's no real difference between observing space and the brain. Nakamura decided to throw his hat into neurosurgery. He gathered his staff and launched the project. This was Nakamura's first foray into the medical field, so he called someone for advice. A famed neurosurgeon from a university in Kyoto. Nakamura wanted to know exactly what neurosurgery entailed. He asked if he could observe an actual surgery. Design is inspired by the real-life environment. If you observe how equipment is really used on site, you might get an idea of how to improve it. If you don't actually go on site, you won't find that inspiration. Nakamura received permission to observe. He made his way to the hospital and was brought into an operating room. Before his eyes, a surgery got underway. Being used was a surgical microscope made by the German firm with a huge share of the world market. Just how were these machines used? Nakamura focused intently, observing the surgery before him take place. At times, the surgeon would move the microscope to perform suction. He would then move the microscope back and refocus. This happened several times. Each time he moved it, the microscope attached to the stand would sway. Once the surgery was over, Nakamura gave his thanks. He said to the doctor, I'd like to relieve at least a bit of your burden. I'm going to try to build a stand that sways for less time. I wondered if there was a way to decrease that swaying to help surgeries end faster. If you have to wait for it to stop swaying every time you move it, surgeries end up lasting longer, and that's a burden on the patient, too. Nakamura returned to Tokyo and got right to work on his stand. A heavy microscope would be installed on its arm. How could he arrest its swaying quickly? Something came to Nakamura's mind. The principle behind scales. Astronomical telescopes carried a thick, heavy lens. To achieve balance, a weight was attached to the other side. The telescope in the observatory in Tokyo has a lens that's 65 centimeters in diameter and weighs 600 kilograms. The whole thing weighs over a ton. How do you move such a thing? With balance. There's a weight on the opposite side, which offsets the lens and lets you move the telescope. It also stops swaying quickly. I knew that due to my background. And Nakamura had one more trick up his sleeve. He had once developed a piece of observational equipment for a rocket. He had included cushioning to prevent breakdown due to violent shaking. To his prototype stand, he added cushioning to the insides of the joints and a counterweight opposite to the microscope.
When he tried moving the microscope, the stand achieved balance. The microscope felt as if it was floating in midair. In addition, thanks to the cushioning in the joints, the swaying went on for less time and the microscope came to a complete halt. However, there was one more problem Nakamura wanted to overcome. Namely, the microscope's focus. Surgeons had to refocus the microscope each time they moved the stand. Could anything be done about this? Nakamura got to work on some ideas. What came to mind was the satellites orbiting the Earth. If he could create a microscope that behaved like an orbiting satellite, it would stay at a fixed distance from the patient and therefore in focus. The idea was to lock parts of the joints in place once focus was achieved. In that way, the microscope would be movable, yet stay at a fixed distance from the patient. Surgeons would need only deal with the trouble of focusing a single time. With that principle in place, Nakamura's new stand was finally complete. Next, he had to figure out how to sell this new stand. His idea was to team up with a large German optics firm. They were best known for their cameras, but were also involved in developing surgical microscopes. That German optics firm owned a camera brand called Leica. That brand of cameras was known worldwide. On the other hand, we definitely weren't. That meant teaming up with them would help the world learn about our technology. Nakamura invited an executive from the company to his workshop, where he made a forceful pitch. How about it? Your microscopes with our stands. Together, we could rival that top manufacturer. Then, for the final test, he had the executive try out his stand. If he failed to get a partnership contract with this firm, all his hard work would prove fruitless. Nervously, he watched the executive's reaction. The microscope moved smoothly, as if floating in midair. Its swaying stopped quickly. The executive had never seen such outstanding control. He looked at Nakamura, saying, This is amazing. Let's sign a contract. I think he was a bit doubtful at first, but once he actually got his hands on it, he was surprised by how smoothly it moved and how quickly it stopped. He thought, We could dominate the American market with this. I better sign a contract quick. With that, the value of the stand received its first recognition. The firm's microscopes were fitted to the stands, and they began to make their way into hospitals worldwide.